friends, my name is Sarah and today we're talking about Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mess. This is the first book in the Throne of Glass series which follows Selena Sarduthian, a notorious assassin. In this first installment, Selena comes out of the salt mines of Endovier after one year of imprisonment and is told that if she can defeat 23 other people in this competition to become the king's champion, she will win her freedom. So I picked this book up in the month of September and then was told that I should read The Assassin's Blade, which is a set of five prequel novellas prior to reading Throne of Glass. So I did that in the month of, I believe it was October, and then I picked up Throne of Glass this month and it was pretty underwhelming. I gave it two and a half out of five stars. I sort of waffled between the like two and a half to three-ish star rating at first, but the more that I have thought about it, it's really just a solid two and a half stars. I definitely read worse, but there is a lot about this book that was just not great. One of the things that I did enjoy about the Assassin's Blade that has continued in Throne of Glass is I do enjoy the world that Sarah J Maas is building. And I am in general pretty new to the fantasy genre. By year 2015, I had pretty much only read like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings when it came to fantasy stuff. And though I have read a good bit more fantasy in 2015 than pretty much any other time in my life, I am still relatively new to the genre and there is a lot that I haven't read. As a result, this is the first book that I've ever read where it deals with like fairies or the fae or whatever they're called and I find that whole concept very intriguing. So I do find the world itself and the magic system that has been banished from the land but is still kind of lurking it sounds like quite intriguing. I will give the obvious caveat that had I read other books with fairies and the fae and all that jazz I might not find the whole thing as intriguing as I do but this is my introduction to fairies and the fae, so for that reason I'm kind of like, huh, this is interesting, because it is the first time I have experienced it. The other thing that I liked about this book is the character Kale Westfall. I did not particularly like him at the beginning, I found him kind of irritating, but as the book progressed and his character developed and grew and changed, I wound up really, really liking him, and he's pretty much the only character in the book that I actually like. And I think part of the reason I find him as intriguing as, and interesting as I do is because I feel like there is more to his story than we have gotten in this first book so far. All we really know about him is that he's captain of the guard and he sort of grew up in the palace and all this stuff, but beyond that we're not told about his history and I I am almost positive that there's something else sort of under the surface and I'm pretty good at like catching all of those things early on and going, oh, there's something bigger here. So I feel like there's something bigger here going on with this dude and so I find him really interesting and intriguing but one of the things that I really appreciated about him is at the beginning of the book he does not like Selena at all like at all he could not care less about her but as he gets to know her, he allows his opinion of her to change. And that is something that I really appreciated about his character because so often in books and kind of in life, people will make snap judgments about a person and then they just decide that they're not going to like this person because of their first impression. Sort of the Mr. Darcy, his good opinion once lost is lost forever kind of thought process. But I really liked how Kale allowed his first impression to be proved wrong and that as he got to know Selena more and spent more time with her, he allowed his opinion of her to change. So the stuff that I didn't like. First up, biggest thing, I don't like Selena Sardothian. I did not like her in The Assassin's Blade. I thought she was super arrogant and really irritating and arrogance is a character trait that I just cannot stand in people or in fictional characters and Selena has it in spades. And like, I get it, she's supposed to be this BA assassin and all that jazz and she is pretty BA in The Assassin's Blade but not so much in this book. That's one of the things that frustrated me so much about this book is she is painted as this just epic awesome world's greatest assassin and it's supposed to be this whole big deal because she's like an 18 year old girl and all this stuff but she doesn't really prove that she's an epic awesome world's best assassin in this story. And again I have already read The Assassin's Blade so I saw the character that she was in that book and from that book, yes, she is like epic awesome assassin, but the thing is, a character is supposed to grow and develop and from the character that Selena is in the Assassin's Blade to who she winds up being in this book, it's 
not so much of the character developing thing, more of the character regressing thing. And so yeah, I just, I don't like Selena. Beyond my issues with our main character, most of the other side characters, aside from Kale, but even him in the beginning, just kind of drove me up the wall. Dorian is your very cliche, my father's this awful human being, but I'm different kind of prince, and Coltane, or whatever her name was, like, I don't understand the purpose of her character, and every single time she showed up, I was like, ugh, not again. Please, can we just stop talking about her? Like, the guy that you assume is going to be the bad guy is the bad guy, and the person you assume she's going to wind up fighting in the final battle is the person she winds up fighting in the final battle. The prince is cliche, Selena is cliche. There's just not a lot of depth to really anything that happens in this story. It's just a lot of young adult cliche things all tossed together into one story. Speaking of cliches, the non-love triangle, love triangle in this book drove me crazy. Aside from the fact that the whole book it was this like, it exists but it doesn't exist kind of thing which was just annoying, it doesn't add anything to the story. In fact, it takes away from the story because it means that Selena, for like a good chunk of the book, is worrying about what Dorian thinks of her and whether or not Kale likes her and all this other stuff. And again, it's like, girl, your life is on the line. Who cares if they like you? Like, oh, it's just... I'm done. I'm done with love triangles that don't drive the story forward. I mean, I'm done with love triangles in general, but especially love triangles that don't drive the story forward. The other thing that really started to bother me as we progressed in the story is the fact that this particular book is sort of painted as like, Selena comes out of the salt mines, she has to defeat all these people so she can win her freedom. And that's not really what most of the book is about. Partway through the book, this sort of secondary plotline gets introduced, and then as a result of this secondary plotline, like a bunch of people in the competition die off screen, and we like, we gloss over like three weeks of a time where it's like, oh, and this challenge happened and this challenge happened and three people died. What? Like, I, but why? Why, why, why would you do that? And the further we progressed in the story, the more it felt like these two plot lines were sort of fighting for attention. And as a reader, it was just, it was confusing because I wasn't sure what kind of story I was supposed to be following. Am I supposed to be following the story that's about this assassin who's trying to win her freedom, or am I supposed to be following the story that's about, that seems to be about something bigger than just this singular event? I feel like this book had a lot of potential and just the execution of it was quite flawed. The story was not sold as what the story actually is, and there's so many other extraneous elements that just don't do anything to build the characters up I just make them into these pretty shallow and cliche individuals rather than giving them characters with depth and interest and things like that. And yeah, I, I'm i not impressed yet with this series. Well, there you have it, friends. That is my review of Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. If you have read the book, I would love to hear your thoughts. So please let me know in the comments, especially if you are a person who particularly enjoyed the story and maybe saw some merit to it that I just totally did not see at all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye! Hello friends, my name is Sarah and today we're talking about Throne of Glass. Throne of Glass? <laughs> well, kind of. There are class issues in it. Anyway. <laughs> wow, okay. Hello friends! Okay.